Today, I'm going to impart with you knowledge of street smarts because I've grown up my entire life in poverty, my entire life on the streets, in the ghetto. So if you ever find yourself in a bad part of town, these tips might help you survive or have an easier way out. The first one is don't ever tell the cab driver or the taxi driver that you don't know where you're going because they may be dishonest and they may take side streets and longer routes to rack up your bill. Now, I know most people use Uber and, and those kind of, you know, ride share programs or whatever, but see, I don't have a cell phone, so I'm forced to use taxi drivers. And better yet, if you know the route, tell them your location where you need to go, like the, the nearby hotel, but also tell them the street names to get there and uh, they'll take you with those street names because if they don't take those street names, you can be like, hey, what are you doing? Why are you going the long way? Furthermore, you should never ever take a taxi or a cab that's picking up multiple passengers. That's not a thing taxi drivers do, and if they are, they may be trying to take you to a nearby alleyway to rob you. It's happened to many people before, so you should never ride in a taxi with multiple people either. So like if there's a driver, someone in the driver's side passenger seat, that's a little fishy. The next tip, if you ever find yourself in a bad part of town or in a shady area, you should always wear shoes that you can run in. Some people might go to these like, you know, shady bars in downtown in a big city and they'll wear shoes or something uncomfortable or something not meant for running and then you're just screwed. If you need to run away in a bad situation and your shoes won't let you, you're out of luck. You're just like, you're unless you are walking around constantly barefoot, you're pretty much not going to be mobile at all. This tip is for tourists or people in unfamiliar territory, but if you are lost or you're worried or stressed out in a in an area, you do not need to act like you're, you know, lost and scared. Act like you belong in the area. Look relaxed. If you're waiting on someone or trying to get your bearings, don't look around all confused and all stressed out and scared. Go sit on a bench somewhere nearby and just kind of chill out, look nice and relaxed. Look like you're waiting for somebody and then get your bearings that way because other people will notice if you're not from the area and if you're scared out of your mind, they may try to take advantage of you. Basically, if you're on the wrong side of the tracks, you need to look like you've always lived there. And if you don't know what that's like, because maybe you move constantly as a child, you, you basically need to walk with determination. Like you know exactly where you're going. Maybe just look a little bit pissed off or a little bit focused. You need to look hyper alert and around you. Don't be looking at the ground or staring at your phone or being oblivious to your surroundings either. Of course, you could always just dress like you're one of the bad guys, you know, with a dark hoodie, shades, just look dodgy as heck and nobody will mess with you because they're, they don't want to take a risk. Also, I know some of you guys don't realize this, but you should never ever leave anything visible in your parked car. As a matter of fact, if your car has one of those back seats that can fold downward to show the trunk, then just leave that open as well. And, and if you're in San Francisco or parts of California, most people will leave their trunks open so that bad guys won't smash in a window and then pop your trunk to see if there's any valuables. Now, here's one uh, for you youngins out there. Maybe you might be short or you might even be an actual child, okay? So if you ever get lost from your parents, okay, go and find help from an adult that also has kids. Don't go to a single person. Don't go to someone that dresses or looks nice. They can be complete psychopaths. Go find a family, you know, preferably a mom, a dad, two to three kids running around. Like, like say you're like at Disneyland or something and you're a kid and you've lost your parents. Of course, try to find someone in uniform or someone that works somewhere. But if that's not an option, then go to some adults that have kids because they will be the least likely to mess with you. Also, here's a tip to know if you're just in a really bad neighborhood or just in a low income neighborhood. OK, there's a difference, OK, between a ghetto and a poor area, okay? If you're in a poor area or a low income area, people are going places, they're catching the bus, they're walking around the streets, they're, they're actually going places, right? But when you're in the ghetto, when you're in the hood, when you're in crime valley, people are just hanging out on the street corners doing nothing at all, just looking for trouble. You'll also know if you're in a bad area depending on when places open and close. If no gas stations in your area don't open until 10 a.m. and they close as early as 9 p.m., then you're in a bad neighborhood. Or if you walk into a fast food place like a Taco Bell or a Burger King, and it looks like it's got bank security with the protective, you know, bulletproof screens, metal bars on the windows. Yeah, that's a bad area. Also, if you're walking around like a possible bad neighborhood and there are other people around like kids, adults, you know, doing something at a park, and you just suddenly notice that everyone is leaving all at once. Maybe you're at like an arcade or a little miniature golf place 
and suddenly everyone leaves. I don't mean like, oh, it's lunchtime or it's about to close. I mean, like you see like everyone stop what they're doing and just leave, except for maybe a few people, then you need to leave too because there's about to be a turf war. Now, I want to I wanna disarm something here. I want to dispel a myth. There's a myth that goes around on websites like Reddit and even sometimes on 4chan that if you don't want people to mess with you when you're in a bad part of town is to act crazy as in to like talk to yourself make chicken sounds and just be like, just act like you're a complete nut job. And that is false. That will make you an even bigger and easier target because people will uh, simply assume that you don't have the means to report the crime. So you should never do that. Don't act like a crazy belligerent schizoid talking to himself because people will just find you an easy mark. Also, if you're planning to go somewhere and you have means of escape and you see a large group of people in an unusual setting, then it's best not to conduct your business there. For instance, let's say you're going to a local fast food place and you pull into the parking lot and you start to notice that in the parking lot there is 20 people just chilling near a truck and some cars just hanging out doing literally nothing. And then you notice that the drive through line is kind of long, but you also notice that the drive through line wraps into a very narrow alleyway that it also blocks vision from pretty much all angles. I, I know this is a city thing, but still, if you were to pull into that drive through eventually those 20 guys might come and uh, have you surrounded, and you'll have to give up everything in your car and your inventory, basically. So the best thing to do is just drive 5 to 10 minutes down the road and eat somewhere else, uh, and not have to chance dealing with that. And yes, they could just be like, you know, like a high school party just let out or something or who, who knows what. But is it really worth uh, chancing it? Like you, you can't take on 20 people, obviously. Okay, now if you live in the ghetto, this one's for you, right? So let's say that you bought a new television and uh, you're the kind of person that just like puts stuff out on the side of the curb for the trash bin to get or whatever, right? Well, you're basically telling the entire neighborhood any kind of would-be robbers that are scouting around that, hey, you have a brand new item that's even better than this that's on the curb. Time to yoink it, right? So you're basically advertising to everyone that there's a shiny object that they could break in and steal. Also, if you can help it to, do not wear an entire set of a solid color. I know this is going to sound weird to some people, but for instance, one night I had went to the gym and I walked and I was walking back home. And I was wearing solid red. Uh, it's, it's it's kind of a weird outfit that I have that uh, it was the only clean clothes I had at the time. And I was completely absent-minded. I had, you know, like just woke up and I was kind of groggy and I wasn't really thinking. So, but here I am wearing a full set of red colors. I'm walking down the street late at night because, you know, 24-hour gym and all. And then I noticed um, like about a, a group of three people all with solid color blue. They see me and they start following me. And then I look over to the other side of the street, and there's a couple more guys in solid blue that start, that just changed direction and started walking towards my direction. I picked up the pace, and so did they, and I was like, oh crap, so this is what's going to happen, right? Red versus blue. And so I, uh, I call out into a nearby sewer tunnel. It's like, okay, I've, I've lured them in, and I jump in the sewer tunnel, which is complete pitch darkness, and they didn't follow me in because... Uh, maybe they thought I was an idiot and uh, was setting up an ambush for them or something, or they didn't want to go into the sewer. But I was dirty anyway, so. Also, if you ever get into an argument or an altercation with anyone ever, like just over anything petty, it doesn't really matter what it's about. You should always be completely and utterly ready for them to try to throw a sucker punch. Always be ready for someone sneaking up behind you. Don't let people, basically, don't ever let people get behind you. Always at least have a 90 degree viewing angle of everyone around you, especially in a heated, like, environment. Also, if you're in a public place, you should never boast or brag about anything that might be valuable on you in your car, nearby, your apartment, your house. Do not let people especially ones that you don't know and trust, know that you have any valuables of any kind. I had a coworker who was at this salon getting her nails done, and she was showing off her new Rolex her husband bought her or something, right? And uh, apparently uh, there was a customer in the lobby waiting to get their nails or toes or whatever done, and uh, so they texted their friends, and their friends ended up showing up at this salon, and uh, they pulled machetes on everybody, and they robbed that Rolex. It was like a tin 
what, ten, twenty thousand dollar Rolex or something like that. I had to check my old messages to see uh, how much it was. And it was sixteen thousand dollars. Oh man! And the way they caught the person was it happened in multiple locations. Basically, every time there was a machete robbery, the person was always present in the like in the waiting area. So they're basically just a scout for their friends, and then they split the loot. Now this one I don't really have any proof of, but if you feel like something's wrong or something's bad, like you have that gut feeling, you have that weird instinct, like your hairs start to stand up on the back of your neck or whatever, then just trust it. Like you, you don't lose anything by not trusting it. And how often have you had a bad feeling about something and then it turns out to be nothing? I've never gotten that gut true, oh, there, there's something bad's about to happen, and then it never did. It's al always something has always happened badly when I get that feeling. Now, if you can help it, try not to be a low, underweight, scrawny person. I know not everyone can do this, and it depends on your age and height and your ability to eat and lift weights, but I, at one point, I was 130 pounds and just a complete skeleton, and I would get messed with all the time, and it wasn't until I got swole, hence the name Swole Benji, that uh, people stopped messing with me. But at the same time, don't neglect cardio either, because if you can just simply run away from bad happenings, then you can't be caught, you can't be punched, beaten up, and mugged if you're just faster than the assailants. This next step, I don't like the idea of doing, and I personally don't do it, but I had some friends that delivered pizzas, and they, they were required by their jobs to do it. They were required to have these little money clips and have fake money, like if you've ever seen the fake like $50 or $100 bills, maybe even a $20 bill, that uh, it's basically just an advertisement for a church sermon. They had that on a money clip, and if they were ever like, you know, being robbed, they would take the money clip and be like, here, if you want it, and blah, and they would throw it like... Uh, in an opposite direction where they're going to flee from so that the robber would have to choose do I chase the person and attack them or do I just pick up this money clip which from a distance will appear to be actual money and a decent amount of money but of course when they pick it up the uh, person is already gone and you know it just pisses them off because it's not real money okay so also if you're in an area see if anyone is focused on you if you're looking around and you notice people are constantly making eye contact with you it's either because you're very attractive you're the opposite sex and they want to you know have an interaction with you or they're looking to make you a target for something and also if you happen to get into to an altercation i did say this earlier always be prepared to be sucker punched but if someone, well, a, a specific type of person, basically, if they start repeating one or two words at a time over and over and, uh, and over, it's because their brain is focused on uh, striking you. They're thinking about attacking you. So they're just saying the same phrase or word over and over and over repeatedly because they can't focus on making their speech correct. And then this is kind of a fighting tip, too, is people, most people that are untrained in fighting will look where they're going to attack you. So if you happen to get into an altercation and someone starts looking at your shins, they might try to kick your shins. So just, I'm not going to teach you how to fight. That's not like what this channel's about. But uh, just pay attention to their eyeballs and see where they're looking. And of course, before an altercation happens, always make sure to keep their hands in sight. Uh, most people are right-handed, so if you can try to position yourself on their right side, uh, it makes it harder for them to attack you or to like suddenly pull out a weapon and shank you with it. Also, if you're indoors, always try to figure out where the exits are or know, like, just have a plan in your head. Be like, okay, if there's a fire or someone starts shooting, this is what I'm going to do. This is where I'm going to go. And also make sure that you're not being followed in, like, a venue because if you go to, like, a bathroom, a bathroom is usually a one-way uh, place and that's a great place for people to strike. So this one isn't so much involved with surviving a ghetto or, um, you know, being street smart, but it's more of a tourism thing. Assume everything is a scam. Anyone that tries to get close to you, anyone that tries to put hands in your pockets, anyone that tries to sell you anything that falls in front of you, drops something near you, invites you to get tea at a local place, just, it's a scam. It's all a scam. Just, just pretend it's a scam. Basically, don't also give out any information to strangers. Like, don't, don't take invitations from a stranger to go anywhere. Okay, if you're traveling, don't let anyone at all know where you're going to be staying or how long you're there for or if you're by yourself. Like now, this is a thing in the ghetto, too. You'll go to like a burger joint that's open at like two in the morning and someone will come up and give you a music CD and be like, oh, I'm an aspiring rap artist. Wow. So cool. Here's my music CD. And you're like, oh, cool. Thanks. And then they suddenly demand cash like I need 20 bucks right now. You touch the CD. It's yours. You owe me $20. It's like, oh, geez. 
Also, don't if you if you do any kind of like if you go to a restaurant or a bar and you're drinking something and you have to go to the bathroom and come back. Uh, if it's a restaurant with a you know a self service, pour yourself a new drink because you don't know who touched it. I always booby trap anything I do if I have to walk away from it. And if I notice a fork is moved, a plate is moved, the straw on my drink is in a different position, then it's I trash it immediately. All right, so if you're the kind of person that needs to sell something on like Craigslist or and you have to meet a random stranger to sell something like a car or maybe a table or furniture or whatever, everyone will tell you on like Reddit and other stupid meme websites to meet in a grocery store parking lot. Yeah, go to the grocery, go to your local grocery store. Now, here's the thing. I used to work retail for 13 years and this, this is the crappiest advice ever. And let me tell you why. Okay. So let's say you meet in a grocery store parking lot and yes, there are cameras and um, a scammer scams you or you get robbed in the parking lot. Well, guess what? Uh, you don't get to look at the footage. You don't get to see the, the camera footage. You have to go through the police and then you have to lawyer up and then you have to get a subpoena for the footage from the grocery store. And then you have to, it's like, it's going to be like one to two months before you even see that footage. And uh, half the time, like uh, the store I worked at, the footage is only saved for three months. Then you, it goes to somewhere in some server farm super far away. And uh, then you have to deal with corporate and getting a hold of corporate in a grocery store is just insanity. So you're looking like six to eight months before you solved your freaking crime of having, you know, your money stolen in a parking lot, right? So my point is, if you're going to arrange to meet with someone to sell a thing, do it in a police station parking lot in front of a police station where the cameras are pointed. And the reason why is scammers and robbers won't want to meet you there, so they'll cancel. Uh, unsavory types just won't want to go there. And so it's an immediate filter for those types of people. But also, let, let's say someone's crazy and they do rob you in the parking lot of the police station. Well, you don't have to wait months for a subpoena because it's literally the police and they will pull it up on camera immediately and then they'll get to work on it. And it's like, it, it'll save you months of, of struggle. Also, more advice for avoiding sucker punches is just stay far enough away from a person that they can't strike you. And I know some people are going to be like, oh, you're backing away, you're being timid, you're showing that you're afraid. No, no. You just, you just back away enough, and if someone keeps pursuing you, it's probably, they're, they're planning to hit you anyway, basically. But this goes to all the guys out there who want to be a freaking white knight superhero, okay? And it does require having a cell phone, which I don't have, so I can't do this, but... Let's say a woman approaches you and acts like she's known you her whole life and that she, uh, you know, is just acting super friendly and very familiar with you. Usually women do this because they're being stalked or they're afraid of someone else uh, that is following them or they feel endangered by their date or they just have their reasons, right? So one suave move that you can do is you can uh, ask them something like, uh, hey, what do you think about this picture that I took the other day? But on your cell phone, just write out something like, is something wrong? And, uh, you know, you can you can use your phone uh, to basically secretly talk to them, uh, you know, without openly being like, is someone following you? Do you need assistance? You know, you just you can keep the, the ruse going. But at the same time, you also need to be very, very wor wary about uh, females approaching you acting super friendly, especially females that are getting extremely close. If you're not super attractive and like, like say you're walking down the street completely by yourself and a beautiful female just runs right up to you, gets right in your face within striking distance and wants to give you a hug and act super friendly and there's no one else around. There was an entire ring of organ harvesters that did this. Okay. The female would run up to the target and she would act super friendly, try to give them a hug. And then off in an alleyway to the side would be two really big dudes ready to abduct the person. The female would then inject the target with uh, some serum of some sort to put them under, make them weak, make them groggy. And then the two dudes would throw the guy in the van and then he would get his organs harvested. So don't let, just don't let people get within striking distance of you ever. Also in the previous situation, I did talk about pulling out your phone to help out someone in need. Make sure you have a very strong grip or even a double grip on your phone so that someone can't just yoink it and then bail. Now, if you are in a situation where you're getting kidnapped or abducted or held against your will, do everything you can to never be put into a secondary location. So if someone climbs in your car and holds you at gunpoint and tells you to drive to an, a certain location, 
just crash your car or take the bullet because you're going to die anyway. Statistically, mathematically, uh, when you go to that second location, most people never make it out alive. I'm going to cover some real basics real quick. Uh, things like backing into a parking space or parking very far away. Uh, the reason you would want to park far away from, like, say, a shopping center is because most shoplifters will park very close to the building and they will peel out and slam into whatever the hell they can to get away. If the, if the building catches fire and explodes, then you're, you'll be parked safe enough away from all the shrapnel. Or if there's an active shooter situation, you will be further in the back while everyone is trying to peel out in their cars and smash into each other and cause a gridlock. You'll be at the back of the parking lot with plenty of cover, able to just immediately peel out and drive away without any gridlocks. If you're sitting down at like a restaurant or a library or something, you don't want your back to the doors. You want to make sure that you're facing, you want your back to a wall facing the entrances and exits so you can see who's coming in and who's leaving. There's a tip involving red lights that I'm not really allowed to tell you about on YouTube, but essentially if your life is in danger, then just pretend there isn't, that, just pretend it's green. I don't know how to word this in a safe way. Also, if you can help it, don't wear designer or any really big name brand clothing. Don't wear Gucci, don't wear Supreme, don't wear expensive stuff. Just wear cheap stuff. Well, that's all the tips I have for now. I'm Soul Benji. Thanks for watching. As always, be a bro and stay swole. Make sure you leave a like on the video. I read every single comment and also make sure you're subscribed because I make videos every single day. With that said, if you want to join the Discord, there's a link in the description. The background footage is from a game called Albion Online. There's links for that if you're interested. Also, if you want to support me, click the join button down below. It's five bucks a month. It's like subscribing on Twitch, but it gives you access to private, more personal videos. So if you don't play any of the games I cover on the channel, there might not be much there for you. But there is a playlist in the pinned comment, so check it out if you'd like. And on your screen right now on the right side is a video that you should absolutely click. And make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss tomorrow's video. I'll see you then. Take care.